In episode five, Colin and Penelope rush into the Bridgerton household, and Colin announces, we are engaged. And all of the Bridgertons, especially Hyacinth, they're pumped. Except Eloise. She's pissed. She's hurt. You can see it in her face. She storms out of the room. And Penelope goes to chase after her because she does want to remain friends with Eloise, even though Eloise is still mad at her. And Eloise isn't so much mad about the whistle-down thing. She feels like Penelope had just played her this entire time, as if Penelope was only friends with Eloise to get to her brother. She had no idea that Penelope even had feelings for Colin in the first place, so to Eloise, this is yet another example of betrayal. And what she's really concerned about is the fact that her brother will eventually find out who Whistledown is. And as she tells Penelope, until my brother finds out the real you, he can't possibly love you. Penelope knows that deep down, Eloise is correct. She needs to tell Colin, but she just begs for a little bit of time to find the right moment to do so. When Penelope goes home that night, though, Eloise isn't even on her mind. She just can't wait to write the next edition of Whistledown to announce the engagement of Penelope Featherington and Colin Bridgerton. Whistledown is actually how Benedict found out because he had stayed the night at Lady Arnold's place. But he wasn't the only Bridgerton guy that was out of the loop for the engagement announcement. Antony had returned home with Kate, and he's got really exciting news. Kate's pregnant. But when he walks in the house, everybody's excited because the big news, at least in their mind, is the fact that Colin is engaged. And not wanting to steal Colin's moment, Kate and Antony decide, okay, we're going to just chill on announcing and trying to steal his shine. The engagement announcement, though, does come as a big surprise to Antony. He's really surprised, actually. Antony wants to make sure that his brother is making a sound decision, so he, along with Benedict, take Colin over to Mondrich's club, and they just sit him down and make sure that all of this isn't coming so quickly. And Colin explains that while it seems like it's coming quickly, it's really not. He's known Penelope for years. He always felt something for her. He just didn't realize what that was until recently. But no, he's of sound mind. Whistledown, by the way, is also how the Featheringtons found out about this engagement. And it doesn't sit well with Lady Featherington. She's pissed. She's pissed off because in her eyes, her daughter squandered a golden opportunity with Lord Debling. And quite frankly, she can't understand this relationship between Penelope and Colin. She starts browbeating Penelope while also trashing the Bridgerton name. And she feels like Penelope must have entrapped Colin. But that's when Colin storms in and interrupts all of this, putting a stop to it. Sticking up for Penelope and telling Portia to basically shut up because she doesn't know what she's talking about. It is a love marriage. He does love Penelope. She didn't entrap him. He's doing this because he wants to and nothing more. And it's pretty clear to Colin that Portia doesn't see in Penelope what he does, which is an amazing person. And then he takes Penelope out of there. He takes Penelope to where they are going to live. He starts showing her a bunch of things, but she's just in awe. And not at the house. She's in awe because she's never had anybody in her life stick up for her the way that Colin just did. She's flat out infatuated with him at this point. And that's when, even though they're not supposed to, the fire burns for each other. And they start stripping down clothes, taking off pantaloons. Corsets fly off. And Colin Bridgerton takes Penelope Featherington's virginity. It's hot, yet for her, it's pretty painful. Because, you know, it's the first time. Though, unlike my first time, there's no crying and apologizing. Anyway, while Colin was banging Penelope's brains out, back at the Bridgerton household, Penelope's old best friend Eloise is just sitting and having a think. And that's when Kate decides to intervene. Kate's trying to be the Viacountess now that she's back, planning some things, but she's also a sister-in-law, and she can see when Eloise is being bothered by something, so she goes to have a talk with her. Eloise tells Kate that, yeah, she's been thinking about Penelope, and she's not surprised that she kept a secret. She's done that before, but what she's surprised about is the fact that it's about Colin. But what also hurts is the fact that everybody's pairing off, and she's once again alone. Kate's advice to Eloise is, tell Colin how you feel, tell him why you're pissed off, because eventually it'll help. A little while later, Colin and Penelope are heading back to Bridgerton House, well, or Featherington House, I mean, they live right across the street from each other, when they notice a commotion in the street. A bunch of the Queen's men are handing out pamphlets, and Colin decides to stop and grab one, and that's when Penelope's world comes crashing down, because the Queen has decided to take action against Lady Whistledown. 
The Queen has always had this love-hate relationship with Whistledown, this cat-mouse game that they play. The Queen actually loves Lady Whistledown and her drama, but she does hate the fact she doesn't know who she is. So she decides to put a bounty on Lady Whistledown's head. 5000 bucks, which is a ton. And for Penelope, that's horrible news, because there are a couple people that do know who she is, and obviously Eloise is one of those people. She doesn't know who she's told. But it's also really bad news for Penelope when Colin, upon reading it, says, good, Lady Whistledown's going to get what she deserves. And as it turns out, Penelope was actually planning on telling Colin she was Whistledown until he stopped to read this pamphlet. Penelope's going to have to figure out what to do, and when they get home, they both go their separate ways. That night, Colin is approached by Eloise about the relationship with Penelope. And Eloise tells him how she feels, just like Kate advised her to. She's pissed off that this is happening, especially because Colin knows that Eloise and Penelope are at odds right now. And Colin apologizes, but he does tell his sister, I'm sorry, but I love her. He also asks for Eloise's blessing, which he doesn't wait for an answer because he wants to get her in a good mood. So he says, oh, actually, uh, I have a gift for you. And then he shows Eloise the Queen's pamphlet on the Whistledown bounty. Yes, the bounty is the talk of the town. It seems like everybody thinks that it's only a matter of time before Lady Whistledown is now found out. It's especially awkward for Penelope because that night her sisters are talking about how exactly you discover Lady Whistledown. And by the way, I haven't mentioned this yet, but it's worth mentioning that both sisters think they are pregnant at this point. So they're just kind of sitting back and eating food. But as they're discussing how easy it would be for the Queen to figure out who Whistledown is, Penelope comes in the room and says, no, she's way too careful for that. The sisters, though, then ask Penelope, how exactly did you get Colin Bridgerton? And that's when, to the surprise of everybody, Portia walks in the room and says, no, no, no. We've been acting uncouth of late. We are Featherington ladies. We support each other, which uh, they've never, ever done. But while Penelope was away, Portia had some time to think about the relationship. She had no idea it was a love marriage. And Varley did advise her that a match with the Bridgerton household would be good. So... In a matter of a couple hours, Portia Featherington is at a complete 180 on this relationship. While this might put Penelope in a good mood, it doesn't. She kind of sees right through it. She's also, though, heavily stressed out. And she retires to her room to write the latest edition of Whistledown. The edition comes out the next day. Everybody reads it. But everybody's also getting ready for that night's ball, which is to be held at the Bridgerton household. Everybody of standing shows up. That includes Cressida who unfortunately seems to have found a husband, although she's not a fan of him. He's one of her dad's friends. The guy is ancient. He's pushing probably 70. He wants kids. It's nothing that Cressida wants. She needs to figure out how to get out of this arranged marriage, and she asks Eloise for help, but Eloise is a little preoccupied at the moment. As Cressida is explaining all of this to Eloise, Eloise can't take her eyes off of Penelope and her brother, So finally, she leaves the conversation with Cressida and her problems and goes and addresses Penelope one-on-one and says, either my brother is very understanding or you haven't told him yet. And Penelope admits, no, I haven't told him. I haven't found the right moment. And Eloise cuts her off and says, you have till midnight. And if you don't tell him by midnight, I'm going to tell him. So now Penelope is really stressed out. Most of the rest of the party is drama-free for the couples. Benedict shows up with Lady Tilly Arnold. Violet Bridgerton did invite Marcus, although Lady Danbury's not a fan of that. And Francesca introduces Lord Kilmartin to her brother. And once Francesca and Lord Kilmartin kind of leave within earshot, Antony, Violet, and Lady Danbury all talk about this relationship. They like Lord Kilmartin, but they'd like somebody better to get Francesca out of her shell. It just seems like Lord Kilmartin is too much like Francesca. And there's also the matter of the Queen. The queen already picked who she wants Francesca to marry. They don't really want to piss her off. But for the time being, they're willing to just let Francesca play this out until they have to step in. Colin then gives up and gives a speech about his engagement to Penelope. Eloise also gives a speech, although it's dripping with innuendos to Penelope that she needs to tell Colin that she is Lady Whistledown. And then everybody gets together in the drawing room to play charades. As the clock ticks down, though, Eloise is getting more and more annoyed because she sees that Penelope is yet to tell her brother. And as she's standing there, just looking angry, Cressida comes up and says, Okay, I thought of a great plan on how I'm not going to have to marry this old guy. 
I'm going to find out who Lady Whistledown is, and I'm going to collect that reward. And Eloise kind of laughs at her and says, you're not going to be able to figure out who she is. I mean, even I couldn't figure out who she is. And Cressida kind of takes that as an insult. She tells Eloise that she will find a way to obtain that reward, and she storms off. No, all Eloise cares about, though, is that clock ticking down. And when it's about five minutes away from reaching midnight and reaching Eloise's deadline, it's getting more and more awkward for Penelope, who can't seem to find a way to tell Colin. And what makes it even worse is the fact that the room is now talking about Whistledown. Penelope realized that she's going to have to tell Colin or else Eloise will live up to her end of this bargain. She runs off for a little bit. When she comes back, she's almost ready to tell him. She's trying to, at least. And that's when Cressida steps up. Because Cressida was involved in a conversation with a bunch of the other people in the room. And they were saying how whoever Whistledown ends up being, she's probably going to be ostracized from society and no one's going to want to marry her. And that's exactly what Cressida wants. So at the moment that Penelope is about to tell Colin that she is Lady Whistledown, Cressida stands up and announces to the entire room, I am Lady Whistledown. To which Penelope has a panic attack over. Oh, and finally, Kate and Anthony tell Violet that they're expecting a child. Thank you so much for checking out this recap. Please consider subscribing to the channel and subscribing to my Patreon. Hit thumbs up if you liked it. Smash that thumbs down button if you thought it sucked. If you left a comment, I don't get back to you. I usually don't check the comments unless they're like a super comment. Also, if you don't see the next video up on the end screen, not to worry. It'll be up in a day or two.